Hello again folks and welcome to Black Bear Outdoors. Today we have an awesome bullpup rifle to show you. Now for those of you who are not familiar with the bullpup design, pretty much what that means is that the action of the rifle is behind the pistol grip and obviously the mag gets inserted there as well. That leans towards a shorter package uh, in overall length. The one in question today is of course the IWI X95. IWI has been creating high quality firearms for near enough 80 years for the IDF. IWI was responsible for the original Tavor or the TAR-21 military version or the SAR-21 civilian version. They're also famous for the Jericho range of pistols and most notably the Tavor X95 that we'll talk about today. All right, folks, so we're going to take a closer look at this uh, rifle. We're going to take it into the table, take a, a look at what features it offers. We're not going to compare it to its predecessor that's been done to death on YouTube, but uh, we are going to take a quick look at what it offers and what makes it special. Then we'll take it out to the range and uh, see how it runs. Stay tuned. All right, folks, now that we have it on the table, let's take a quick look at what the Tavor offers. Starting at the muzzle end, you have a birdcage style flash hider. Uh, in this case, it's an 18.6 inch barrel, but they come in all kinds of uh, barrel lengths. It's a cold hammer forged one in seven twist barrel. And then uh, let's move on a little bit. So if you look at the handguard, um, you'll see there's a little panel on here, right? Now you can move these off and it'll reveal some Picatinny rail at the uh, uh, nine, three, and uh, six positions. So as you can see on this side, we uh, took the panel off and added the uh, Enforced WML light. Usually when you would buy this uh, rifle, it'll come with the uh, cutlass that looks like that. It's really nice, I really like it, gives you extra points of contact. However, with uh, the laws in Canada, uh, it's just easier to use the pistol grip, um, which allows you to use a normal trigger guard. You'll see it's very easy to replace. There's just a screw at the bottom of the pistol grip there and you just unscrew that, stick the new one in and uh, screw it back on. The manual of arms is not very far removed from an AR these days uh, because most people are used to the, uh, you know, where the controls are and so forth. So you'll see the mag release, which is AMBI, is right here on your index finger as well as the uh, uh, safety, which is not AMBI. Um, however, that's on, on your thumb the same as it would be on uh, an AR, for example. It's got all kinds of uh, QD points on it as well. And here we go with the action. You'll see the bolt release is right over here, as we said before, and uh, spits out your rounds on this end, right? Uh, mag well is right over here. And here's a pretty cool thing about this rifle, right? So for somebody in the field who wants to break this down really quickly, uh, all you're going to need is a bullet tip. Uh, we don't have any bullets around us uh, when we're looking at firearms on the table here. So I'm going to use something else. We'll just grab a little Allen key. So all you need to do is you've got one pin up here. It'll push that out. It's got a retaining pin here. Pull on that. It opens up in the back. And there you go field stripped. You got access to the piston, to the bolt, to everything. You can clean it very, very quickly. Reassembly is just as easy. Just push it back in. Retaining bolt in there. And you're good to go. Simple as that. Same is true for the uh, actual trigger pack, right? So it's just these two pins up here and the trigger pack falls out. Uh, you just replace the trigger pack and there you go. Now for the guys who don't like the trigger on this, there uh, is a Geisley one available. It's got uh, the Super Sabre pack as well as the Lightning Bow trigger uh, itself, right? So a lot of people say that makes a huge difference. I'm a big fan of Geisley myself, so I don't blame them. Let's flip her around real quick. You're going to see that it's got a monolithic rail running all the way down the rifle. We currently have a Hollow Sun 503G up on there with the ACSS reticle. Nice little feature as well, it's got built-in uh, backup sights as you can see. That's the front, uh, that's the back. It's got a little aperture and it's got a tritium insert up there and it's fully adjustable as well. Alright, this side of the rifle. Uh, like I said to you before, we have the Enforced WML uh, on here, which is a nice little light, really like it. 
charging handle up here which is non-reciprocating which is a really big thing because when you fire the rifle it means that the uh, charging handle stays in place it doesn't go back and forth so you're not going to hit yourself in the hand by accident again safety lever very much like a uh, AR flappy thing either right there and we got our pistol grip again right let's show you the trigger pull real quick uh, this is uh, safe it's cleared and it's pointed in the safe direction so I hope you can see that it's a bit squishy and the reason for that is bullpups have a bit of an issue because it's got a trigger bar that runs all the way back to the action so you're never gonna get you know the same type of trigger that you would get on a normal uh, kind of configuration rifle but this is really not bad considering right so there you got a bit of slop as you can see but uptake there we go let's do it again bit of uptake and you hit the wall and there we go so it's not bad at all I quite like it it's it's a bit of a training thing as well you're gonna have to learn how to shoot this like any firearm also the way you get in behind this rifle is different from you know a normal configuration rifle so it's gonna take you a while to get really nice and accurate with this one but uh, once you got that down this is a fantastic little rifle we did put in the uh, Manticore Arms curved butt pad it just kinda sits in my shoulder a little bit better so I really really like that so uh, yeah, that's pretty much what she's got going on. Uh, nice and small package, um, really robust. Um, yeah, it's not gonna let you down. So let's uh, put my money where my mouth is and let's take her out to the range and see what she's all about. Stay tuned. Alright guys, first up we're going to test a few different types of mags that's available here in Canada in the, in the rifle and see how they run. Uh, we're going to be looking at the Lancer, the uh, USGI mags, as well as the LAR pistol mags. Reloading with this rifle can be very quick and very smooth with a bit of practice. Uh, having your uh, bolt release right behind the magazine and just hitting it with your thumb as you, as you bring the magazine in makes a big difference. Using some Hornady Supermatch ammo, uh, Mrs. Bear was able to get a fairly decent group out of this rifle. The recoil on this rifle is really, really manageable. As you'll see, uh, it goes straight back uh, into your shoulder and it's not actually jumping up and down like you'd expect from a normal kind of design rifle. Also, all the weight is in the back, so it's, it's very, very manageable and you can even shoot it one-handed if you need to. All right, folks, so final thoughts on the rifle. 
Um, we think it's a fantastic rifle. Um, there are some pros and cons to it. Let's start with a couple of cons. Well, it's not really a con, but you know, you do get people who are going to say this. It's an expensive rifle. Sure it is. Uh, there's a lot of R&D still re to recoup. If you compare it to something like uh, an AR-15 that's been around since the 50s, they have no R&D cost to recoup anymore. You're also going to get people who say, well, for that price, I can get a Gucci AR that can shoot a quarter off a squirrel's head at a thousand yards. Well, yeah, you probably can. But that's like comparing a Corvette to a Jeep. They kind of cost the same amount. However, they're designed for two very, very different things. The Tavor is not a DMR. It's not a long range precision rifle. It's built to be compact, to be maneuverable, to be fast and to be accurate at the distances it's used for, right? So um, all in all, I think it's a fantastic rifle. You get the advantages of an 18.6 inch barrel in this, which doesn't give you super accuracy or anything like that, but it does give you a much higher velocity and much better terminal ballistics. So uh, I can honestly see the application for this. Um, for, a, for us, for example, it's a zero to 200 coyote gun. I am very comfortable to take a coyote to 200 yards with this. Um, I can see the law enforcement application, SWAT teams, that kind of stuff. I can see the military application in it, especially in uh, urban kind of settings and things like that. Uh, you know, the, the CQB kind of stuff. Um, it is a fantastic piece of machinery. It's built like a tank, it's going to last you forever. And it's got a track record from uh, the IDF. It's been in service for quite a while. So yeah, guys, if you uh, enjoyed the video uh, or if you learned something new, please hit that subscribe button on the next page. It's going to look like a black bear badge. Give us a thumbs up and leave us a comment and we'll try and respond to those as soon as possible. You have a good one.